starts right now. First at noon, San Antonio police, along with SWAT, spending almost 11 hours negotiating with an armed man on the city's south side. It all happened at a location off of Ada Street and South New Braunfels Avenue that's east of I-37. Chief William McManus says that man was suffering from mental health and illnesses. Stephen Gavassos reports the hours that led to that resolution. It was a long night for everyone involved, but the goal was to bring this volatile situation to a peaceful end. However, that resolution did not come quick and wasn't easy. This all started just before 11 last night. A 42 year old man was reportedly walking around an HEB parking lot with a gun and told a customer he was going to shoot himself and to call police. They were able to track that man down by Ada and South New Braunfels near McCrellis Branch Library. Police were able to detain him within that area. Their SWAT and mental health teams were called out to help. Chief Willie McManus tells us his officers have had previous encounters with that man, which were related to mental health issues. We have emergency detained him in the past at least a few times. Law enforcement agencies negotiated with that man for almost 11 hours, even offering him cigarettes and a breakfast taco. At one point, they used a siege round, which police say is less than lethal ammunition. Once he was struck, he was grabbed and taken into custody. McManus says situations like this not only require patience, but conversation. And in this case, he believes that's what saved this man's life. It's always a good feeling when these end. The way they do right now without anyone getting injured, that's our main goal. Now, police have not released that man's name, and it's also unclear if he's received any help for his reported mental health issues. For now, he's set to undergo a psychological evaluation. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. The arrest of a Bear County Sheriff's deputy this week is prompting changes within the department's training program. That training deputy is accused of abusing his power, groping at least one woman cadet. As Katrina Weber reports, the sheriff says he is making sure that behavior never happens again. This mugshot marks the beginning of a criminal history and possibly the end of a career. 48-year-old Toribio Gutierrez has been arrested on charges related to an abuse of power as a training deputy at the Bear County Sheriff's Academy. He's accused of preying upon nearly half a dozen female cadets, groping a 25-year-old. But the sheriff says he suspects there are even more victims. I find it hard to believe that all of a sudden this just occurred and it just occurred to these five, five young ladies. Sheriff Salazar says he's taking steps to fire Gutierrez, a BCSO veteran of more than two decades who worked in training for nearly five years. It's just not acceptable that anybody can make uh, any female uh, or male for that matter feel uncomfortable in a position like that. The sheriff says what happened in that training class is infuriating, but he says he's doing all he can to make sure that everyone, especially new recruits, can feel at ease. For starters, he says he's making changes at the academy, including moving some people around. Male instructors just will not be teaching a class uh, by themselves. There's going to be a female uh, instructor in the class. Meanwhile, the investigation is not over. Salazar says he'll continue reaching out to others who Gutierrez trained and possibly tested in this way. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We are still waiting to learn the name of the woman who was hit and killed while crossing the street overnight. It happened around 930 last night in the 2000 block of South WW White Road. Police tell us a pickup truck did not see the woman in the road and hit her. The woman was taken to an area hospital where she later died. Police say the driver did stop to help and will not face any charges. New at noon, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are hoping that you can help them find the men responsible for robbing a victim at gunpoint. This happened at the Rio Springs Apartments in the 2800 block of West Hutchins Place on May 4th. Police say the victim was walking his dog when the two men pointed a gun at him and demanded that he give them the dog. Police say the suspects drove off with the puppy. If you have any information that can lead to an arrest, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Turning now to the latest on the coronavirus cases here in Bear County, local health officials reported 125 new cases of COVID-19 along with nine new deaths. That brings the total number of COVID-related deaths in Bear County to 3,400. There is currently 210 COVID-19 patients in our hospital, 68 in intensive care, and 34 are on ventilators. A CDC advisory panel now set to meet today to discuss whether to recommend the Pfizer vaccine 
to 12 to 15 year olds. Most states waiting for the CDC's recommendations before beginning those vaccinations in kids. Meantime, some states have already started their vaccination process after the FDA announced it was safe to do so on Monday. CDC officials will also be discussing if it's OK for kids to get a COVID-19 vaccine at the same time that they get other vaccines for other diseases like meningitis and measles. Some doctors say this could make it more difficult to vaccinate children. For children who are not caught up with their regular vaccines, this could provide an obstacle for full vaccinations. The idea will be to see if we can remove the barrier to multiple vaccinations when they are appropriate. Walmart says the rollout will be the same as it was for adults. It's not too clear if that rollout of the vaccine will happen in time for summer, but authorities say there should be enough shots to make it easier for kids at least to go back to school in the fall. And traffic authority coverage this noon, a bill changing the rules for lawsuits after crashes involving big rigs is moving forward in the Texas legislature. A Senate committee voted to advance the bill this morning after hearing testimony on both sides of the issue. Consumer groups say it'll make it more difficult to hold companies responsible for safety issues. Supporters of the bill say it will crack down on excessive lawsuits and lower insurance costs, which have been escalating. Growing at such a uh, great rate in the last couple of years alone uh, that is putting businesses um, out of business, frankly. So this is something that um, the industry sorely needs. We want safer roads and we can actually guarantee that safer roads will bring down insurance costs. And they can't say the same thing about this complicated legal maneuver that they're trying to pull. The bill now goes to the full Senate. A version has already passed the House. If signed by the governor, it would apply to lawsuits filed after September 1st. Now to the growing fallout from the cyber attack that happened to a crucial pipeline that supplies nearly half of the fuel that's used on the East Coast. As ABC's Rena Roy reports, at least four states have now declared a state of emergency as gas prices spike. It's a mad dash for gas as prices rise and pumps run out. If I don't get gas, I'm going to be sleeping in my car tonight at work. The national average is now $3 a gallon, the most expensive in seven years. High demand causing outages at stations in the southeast, cars lining up to refill their tanks. Everywhere I go, it's, it's bags over the gas pumps. We have sold 4,000 plus gallons within three hours. We're already out of unleaded regular. States of emergency declared in Georgia, Florida, Virginia, and North Carolina, with the Colonial Pipeline shut down now in its sixth day. Imperative that instead of hoarding gasoline, in these areas that motorists simply park their cars for a few days uh, and conserve as much as possible. The FBI says the criminal organization Darkside, likely operating from Russia, hacked the system. Some Homeland Security officials now calling the cyber attack the most devastating ransomware attack on critical infrastructure in the U.S. to date. A lot of this is a cyber problem, but a lot of it a lot of it is a foreign policy problem. Clearly, uh, the Russians are aware of it and they have some role to play here and they need to be held to account. Russia has denied any involvement. Even airlines are feeling effects. Americans saying it will have to make pit stops for fuel on some long haul flights to Hawaii and Europe and cancellations could be next. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. We'll get a break from the rain next couple of days, but it returns this weekend. We'll look at that seven day forecast coming up. Still to come this half hour, the Spurs are in the middle of the playoff hunt, but Patty Mills has some time to reflect on his days playing with Tim Duncan. Larry Mears with that coming up in sports. The UN and the US calling for a resolution in the Middle East. Why the UN fears a full scale war may happen between Palestine and Israel before this is all over after the break. We want to bring you the latest in the conflict in the Middle East. Rockets streaming out of Gaza and Israel being pounding, rather pounding the territory with airstrikes. As ABC's Julie McFarland reports, more than 1,000 rockets have been fired from the Palestinian militants at Israel over, 38 hour, over a 38-hour period. Israel on a war footing. An entire apartment block in Gaza leveled to the ground amid hundreds of Israeli airstrikes. Its occupants warned in advance by Israel to evacuate. 
But for some, no warning came. The health ministry says dozens of people killed in Gaza so far, some of them children. Palestinians in Gaza burying their dead in mounting anger and grief. On the other side, across Israel, sirens wailing into the night, sending terrified people rushing to bomb shelters. Israel says more than a thousand rockets and mortars have been fired from Palestinian militants at Israel over a 38-hour period, most intercepted by Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system, but not all. One rocket hitting a house close to Tel Aviv. Half a dozen Israelis, including an IDF soldier, have been killed in the barrage so far. Violence also igniting in Arab Israeli towns and neighborhoods across Israel. We've not seen this escalation since the last war between Israel and the Palestinians in 2014. Israel's defense minister warning this is only the beginning. The international community is putting pressure on both sides to pull back and avoid further escalation. The UN warning it fears a full-scale war. But the reality is this conflict never ended. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Live look outside. <laughs> it's a little bit chillier right now than it was yesterday. Um, but at least it's not raining anymore. No, it's not raining. It's cool, cloudy, though. It doesn't feel like mid-May, really. Temperatures below average. We're still in the 60s. We may get up to around 70 this afternoon. Uh, the aquifer in good shape. It's up four tenths per foot today to 665.6. I think it'll rise even more after yesterday's rainfall. Some good numbers. We'll show you those totals coming up. Molds are high today, 1980 thanks to the rain. Pecan is low. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. All right, you got your sweater on. Justin and Katie Blaker in the weather department going, it's cold in here, it's cold. I'm like, I'm waiting for the, somebody to fire up the heater. I, you know, I just thought one last sweater for the, for the year. Why not? Come on. It probably is the last time. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know if cold is the right word, not okay, cool. but it's cool. It's coolish. It's cool, but cool ish. Y'all forgot about February, didn't you? <laughs> Were you trying to block that out? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, temperatures are in the 60s today, cloudy skies. Yesterday was a good day rainfall wise. The numbers were fantastic. It was widespread. That's what we like to see. Now keep in mind, this does not take into account Monday's numbers. This was just last night, 24 hour rainfall. And the airport picked up 18 hundredths of an inch. Uh, some of the bigger totals down there. Catula, 1.05. Comfort, 1.51. Medina Lake, over an inch. Same in New Braunfels, Seguin. Uh, even off to some of our eastern counties, Kennedy, 0.4 uh, inches of rain. So this was good. This was good stuff. And as we look a little closer here to Bear County, Atkins close to an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch there on the southwest side. One of the higher totals I saw right there at the Bear Medina County line, just north and west of Holotus, 2.92. So the, the numbers really, really good. And a lot of this was over the recharge too. So that's why we think the aquifer will continue to go up. We're at 665.6. And this is a look at the aquifer since March 1st. You can see our big dip there where we went into stage two, but the rains have been good as of late and bumped it all the way up to 665. We'll see uh, how the stages go. We're still technically in stage two, but uh, things are uh, looking better. Sauce has to make that decision, by the way. Uh, but again, the, the, the aquifer on its way up. Here's what to expect. We've got cloudy skies out there right now. We're gonna see a cloudy, cool, breezy day, a slight chance for shower, but I really think that's probably out of the picture at this point. And then mostly cloudy and warmer next couple of days. And then by the weekend, some scattered showers and storms. Those will start to show up Saturday and uh, we could see some decent rain out of that too. Right now, 66 degrees, cloudy skies, northeasterly winds at 18, gusting to 31. Winds have been pretty blustery today. And looking at the satellite picture, a lot of clouds across the state. You'll notice some showers across deep south Texas out in the Gulf of Mexico, but most of those are staying away from us. There has been some sun off to the west of San Antonio. We're starting to see a little bit of sun there on the northwest side. So once the sun pops out, uh, temperatures may jump up a little bit. Places like Hondo seeing some sun. You're up to 69 there, 65 Boulevard, 62 Canyon Lake, 59 in Kerrville, and 67 right now in Del Rio. And uh, looking at the wind, still gusting at 31 here in town. Winds will stay gusty into the afternoon, gust 25, maybe 30 miles per hour. Dew points are down thanks to the northerly wind. They jump back up though this weekend. That's going to lead to some showers and storms. And here's what the forecast looks like. Mostly cloudy today, mostly cloudy tomorrow. 
and mostly cloudy on Friday, but no rain. Once we get into Saturday, though, watch what happens. Showers and storms start to fill back in. Scattered activity during the day. Doesn't look like there's a huge threat for severe weather, mainly just some light rain here with a few rumbles of thunder. We'll keep an eye on that forecast as we get a little bit closer, but right now about a 60% chance of rain in the forecast on Saturday. Today, temperatures up to around 70 or so. Gusty northerly winds, 60% chance as we mentioned Saturday, 40% chance Sunday. And we've got more chances even going into next week. By early next week, that's when we could see a few strong storms and maybe some pockets of heavier rain. So the active pattern continues, guys. Keeping you busy all week long. That's right. All right. Thanks, Justin. Spurs control their own destiny. Win tonight, they clinch. Yeah, they do. And uh, and they've, if for some reason they happen to lose, the Pelicans also play tonight. So if the Pelicans lose, then the Spurs are in. But we definitely want the Spurs to beat the Nets. And Yaka Pertle will once again factor because he just does a lot of the small things that you don't see in the stats. And Aggies, DB, Jalen Jones made a big impression this year. Coming up. Crashing the Milwaukee Bucks 146 to 125 Monday night at the AT&T Center. The Spurs will play the Brooklyn Nets tonight. The victory could not have come at a better time for the Spurs who reduced their magic number to clinch a playing spot to one. So any combination of a Spurs win or Pelicans loss and the Spurs clinch and the Pels play at the Mavs tonight. Monday night, Jakob Pertl had nine points, 10 rebounds and eight assists. And he just loves doing anything he can to help the Spurs win. I take a lot of pride in it. Um, I think, like you said, a lot of the stuff I, I do doesn't really show up in the stats. But um, at the end of the day, like for me, it's about trying to play winning basketball. Um, and it was it was fun to see that come together against Milwaukee. We, we really got rolling on offense. I think everybody contributed in their own way. We we're making shots all over the place. So, yeah, it was a, a very fun game to play. Nets will host the Spurs tonight at 7. San Antonio can clinch a play-in spot tonight. The countdown continues this week for Tim Duncan and his enshrinement into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame Saturday night at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. Spurs guard Patty Mills came to the Silver and Black in 2011 and was part of the championship team in 2014, the fifth and final NBA title for Duncan. But more importantly, Patty was Tim's teammate for five seasons before Duncan retired in 2016. Mill says he always admired Duncan's professionalism when it came to how he approached the game. And that's probably a big, the biggest thing that I've learned um, in, in this environment was from him in particular um, about how professional you got to go about things both on and off the court. Um, you know, for, for me, it was such a privilege to be able to witness that firsthand um, and, and learn from, from him at the same time. Um, you know, very, very, very grateful in that respect. Um, you know, and he, he'll obviously go down as an all-time great um, and, and proud to be, you know, be known as a teammate. And fans can take part in the Tim Duncan Hall of Fame photo walk at the AT&T Center. Visitors will walk through numerous photo opportunities with some of Duncan's biggest accomplishments throughout his Hall of Fame career, including the team's five championship trophies and his three NBA Finals MVP trophies, which will be on display publicly for the first time ever. That's tomorrow from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. and Friday from 2 to 7 p.m. for the general public. And how about a shout out to Jalen Jones, who was named Texas A&M Athletics Male Newcomer of the Year during the 8th Annual Building Champions Awards. The Steel Knight great started all 10 games in his first collegiate season and was a key contributor on one of the SEC's best defenses. Jones led the A&M D and was tied for second among SEC freshmen with six pass breakups on the season. And he made his first career interception off a tip pass in the second quarter and had five tackles in the win against LSU. As a unit, A&M's Defense led the SEC in total defense and was top two in the league in passing and rushing defense. Back to the Spurs, you know, you and I have had the opportunity to see those trophies. Yeah. In, in the trophy case at the yeah. AT&T Center, but if you have never seen them, it's a great opportunity. It's oh, open it's, to the public, man. It's you pretty cool indeed. Hey, and coming up later in sports, the Cowboys are going to help kick off the 2021 NFL season. We got that matchup for you. That'll be fun. Yep. Thanks, Larry. With an eye toward herd immunity, top U.S. health officials encouraging parents of 12 to 15 year olds to go ahead and get their children vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine. Still ahead, why some believe this could be the turning point in the pandemic. House Republicans officially removing Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who is the third highest ranking member among them. 
She's been removed from her leadership position as conference chair. Next, how this will impact the future of the GOP. Decision day for House Republicans voting behind closed doors to remove Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney from her leadership position. Cheney, who is the highest ranking Republican woman defiant in her final hours as conference chair, condemning other Republican leaders who she says have gone along with former President Trump's false claims about the election being stolen from him. ABC's Mary Alice Parks has the details for us. A day of reckoning for Republicans on Capitol Hill. House Republicans officially removing Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who was the third highest ranking member among them from her leadership position as conference chair. Cheney, not shy on her way out, saying after. We cannot both uh, embrace the big lie and embrace the Constitution. I uh, will do uh, everything I can to ensure uh, that uh, the former president never again gets anywhere near the Oval Office. The vote exposing deep divisions within the GOP, not over policy, but over the party's relationship with former President Trump. On the House floor last night with only one other Republican in the chamber, Cheney raising the stakes, saying this is about democracy. Today we face a threat America has never seen before. A former president who provoked a violent attack on this Capitol in an effort to steal the election. Cheney, one of 10 House Republicans who voted to impeach Trump after the siege on the Capitol on January 6th. Republican leaders insisting her words have now become a distraction as Trump continues even this week to push false claims about his election loss. Trump this morning welcoming the vote, but Senator Mitt Romney defending Cheney, warning expelling Liz Cheney from leadership won't gain the GOP one additional voter, but it will cost us quite a few. Congresswoman Elise Stefanik this morning officially throwing her hat in the ring to replace Cheney. She has the backing of Trump, but may not be a shoe in Some Republicans questioning if she is conservative enough. Stefanik actually voted against the Trump tax cuts, but she voted to overturn the election results. Now her vote is expected Friday. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. Two senior Trump administration officials are defending their actions today during the January 6th ride at the U.S. Capitol. Appearing before a congressional hearing, former Defense Secretary Christopher Miller says he stands behind every decision he made that day. In prepared testimony, Miller says he was concerned before the insurrection that sending troops to the building could create fears of a military coup. Former Acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen is also testifying before the House Oversight Committee. Conversations continuing in Congress as well about the election bill as Democrats push for broader voter access and Republicans resist. Republicans pushing to roll back proposals for mail-in ballots, 24-hour ballot drop boxes, and other changes to the election laws. The Rules Committee deadlocked 9 to 9 over advancing the bill to the full Senate. Democratic leader Chuck Schumer says restrictive new voting laws emerging around the country will simply make it harder for people to vote. And the Farmers to Families Food Box program created to help families during the pandemic is coming to an end. The program delivered nearly 167 million boxes of fresh food to families in need. It first faced some initial criticism due to the government partnering with some companies that had little experience with food distribution. Senate Nutrition Committee Chair Cory Booker says he hopes the program continues on in some form. The number of unaccompanied children on the U.S.-Mexico border in April down from March. Authorities encountered nearly 17,200 children who were traveling alone. That was down 9% from March. This is more adults are coming without their families. Family encounters also down. Overall, Border Patrol encounters topped 173,000, the highest level since April 2000. Outside with live cam, according to some folks around here, it's a little chilly outside. It's kind of cold. Well, I guess cold's not the right. Cool. They're, they're calling it cool some. I say it's like all gone good. <laughs> it's all relative. Perfect. But listen, I think we'll all take this kind of weather, considering we're about to go into big time heat. It's going to happen in June and July. We know that. Uh, feels pretty good out there right now. The sun's trying to pop out, so that's going to lift temperatures just a little bit. First, though, let's start with the picture. Yesterday's storms came through. Right at sunset, they cleared out sun, the rain made for some beautiful rainbows out there. We got a lot of shots in it on KSAT Connect. This was just one of them. 
out near Marbach Village on the west side. We appreciate it. Uh, beautiful shot. And as we look at temperatures right now, we're now up to 66 at the airport, 65 Randolph, 65 in New Braunfels. Still cloudy up there. But you notice there are some breaks now forming around Holotus, Rio Medina, down towards Hondo. That'll boost temperatures a little bit, but all in all, it's going to be a below average day. Let's talk about rain chances. Really, rain chances are pretty much over today. We won't have any next couple of days, but by Saturday, they jump back up again. Showers and a few storms, 60%, 40% chance Sunday, Monday. It'll be a hit or miss type situation, uh, but there is more rain in the forecast. For today, though, just mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures up near 70. Northerly winds 10 to 15 and gusty, and uh, mostly cloudy skies coming up tomorrow and Friday as well, guys. Thank you, Justin. Top U.S. health officials are encouraging parents of 12 to 15 year olds to get their children vaccinated. Now that the Pfizer vaccine has been granted emergency use authorization for that age group. In today's Health Minute, CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on why some believe this could be a turning point in the pandemic. After the Pfizer vaccine got the green light for those as young as 12, pharmacies and pediatricians across the U.S. are ready to put shots in arms. I have so many families who are already asking, Dr. Edith, where do we go? When can we get this? We're not really dealing with hesitancy as much as we are dealing with how to meet demand. Still, in a recent poll, only 30 percent of parents with at least one child ages 12 to 15 say they'll vaccinate right away. I recognize that uh, there some parents want to sort of see how it goes first, but I am encouraging all parents to get their children vaccinated. Some parents won't want to be first, but I'm also encouraging children to ask for the vaccine. The U.S. has been ramping up efforts to vaccinate Americans to get ahead of spreading variants and with an eye toward achieving herd immunity. The expanded authorization means 85 percent of the U.S. population is now eligible to receive a COVID-19 vaccine. Some view this as a potential turning point in the pandemic. With this vaccine, we can we can move in a different direction and and really get on the other side of this. Pfizer expects to submit for emergency use authorization for its vaccine for children ages 2 to 11 in September. Its trials for children ages 6 months to 11 years old is still ongoing. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. A senior at Samuel Clemens High School overcoming a learning disability and has continued to strive in school. Still ahead, why his teachers and counselors say Jackson has a bright future. And UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer talking football at the quarterback club. Larry Mears with more from him coming up. And apparently McDonald's wants to keep people informed about the COVID-19 vaccine. What the food, fast food chain is putting on their coffee cups that can help people get their shot. Everyone, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. McDonald's is teaming up with the White House this to promote the COVID-19 vaccine. The fast food chain redesigning their coffee cups to feature the slogan that we can do this. That includes the website address vaccine.gov. This will point people to find nearby appointments and general vaccine information. The new cups will roll out in July. The effort comes as the U.S. has now hit a vaccine wall where supply is starting to outstrip demand. Meanwhile, Instacart is shifting to mostly remote workflow. They're now being accused of favoring their higher level employees. The grocery delivery service only asking junior level employees to return to the office a few times a week. This while they continue to allow their managers and senior employees to continue to work from home. And SoftBank reporting quarterly earnings overseas on Tuesday. The company reporting the highest annual profit for a Japanese company on record. It's equivalent to roughly $46 billion. SoftBank attributing that success mainly to an investment gain from SoftBank's Vision Fund, whose portfolio companies have been part of the recent listing craze. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. He's the pitcher and the captain of the Samuel Clemens High School baseball team, and he's hoping one day to work on a ranch taking care of wildlife. Today's great graduate is Jackson Bach, and as Sarah Costa reports, his teachers and counselors say Jackson has a bright future because of his work ethic and positive attitude. Jackson Bach has been playing baseball since he was in the second grade. Now he's a pitcher at Samuel Clemens High School. 
He says baseball has taught him lessons off the pitcher's mound as well, like how to get through a pandemic in your senior year of high school. Right now we're, we're faced with adversity and we, we just need a win. It's, it's a teamwork deal. If, when, we, when we play as a team, we win as a team. Next year, he'll be attending Texas A&M Kingsville University, where he hopes to walk onto the baseball team. But his main goal is to study wildlife, where he hopes to work on a ranch like the King Ranch one day. It all started with my dad, and we've always been fishing or hunting and just the passion for it and just seeing the conservation of it. Those who have watched Jackson excel in school say it's his personality that really makes him stand out. I think he's one of the most gregarious um, young men that I think I've ever met. But what Jackson's counselor, Vicki Williams, says makes him so special is his positive attitude and outlook on life. He has a different vision. You know, kids these days will use the word woke. He's woke in all dimensions of the word, um, and he just has a different level of maturity than some of his same age peers. That maturity and positive outlook helped Jackson overcome his biggest obstacle in school, getting diagnosed with dyslexia in third grade. But he doesn't see it as a learning disability and isn't ashamed of it. He says it just taught him how to work harder. He says he hopes other students who face similar issues embrace their differences. Don't be afraid to be different. It's just like glasses. <laughs> I mean, people have to have glasses to read. I just need a little extra help on reading without them. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We wish him the best of luck. Yeah, good for him. Looking outside, chilly. They look like winter clouds, don't they? It looks like the it, it looks like Texas winter. <laughs> this is this is what <laughs> Texas winter is supposed to look like. Well, we've uh, we've got a little bit of everything this year, so it's just par for course, right? And we're, we've got some more rain on the way too. I think as we get towards the weekend and next week, 66 so far today. That's it. Uh, 86 is the average high, so we're going to run about 15 degrees below average, I think, when it's all said and done. The record is 101, set back in 1967. Thankfully, we're not there. It does warm up next couple days, and I mentioned those rain chances. We'll take a look at the seven-day forecast coming up. Welcome back. Uh, pretty cool here, pretty cool across a large portion of the country, 50s and 60s as we look uh, across the United States. The warm spots continue to be down there in Florida. So it typically is 88 right now in Orlando, 86 in Phoenix. Two of the warmest spots. The rest of the country really is below average uh, when it comes to these temperatures. We had that frontal battery come through and it feels pretty good here in Texas. It's still in the low 50s up there around Amarillo, 60s, Dallas, Waco, Houston's close to 70, and that's about where we'll be this afternoon. Lots of cloud cover and that's keeping temperatures down some, although we are starting to get a few breaks around here and that may help us a little bit with getting those temperatures a little bit warmer. See some of the breaks, Western Bear County, also in Medina County, Hondo, you are seeing some sun and boy, it's been a rough couple weeks for folks there along Highway 90 in Hondo. Uh, you got more rain yesterday, but things clearing up a little bit today. Uh, that's the scene outside, and we've got 66 at the airport, 67 Stinson, 68 Kelly, 65 Randolph. Winds out of the northeast at about 18 officially at the airport, and that's actually coming down a little bit from where they were earlier. Winds will continue to calm into tonight, but through the afternoon, expect some gusty winds. We could see some gusts up around 25, maybe even 30 miles per hour. 64 Canyon Lake, 65 Boulevard, 65 in New Braunfels, still in the 50s up there around Kerrville, 59 degrees there. 67 in Del Rio, 69 Catula, and 69 right now in Kennedy. A little bit warmer as you get down towards Victoria and Corpus. There's a look at the wind gust still gusting the 31 here in town, gusting the 25 in New Braunfels, and gusting the 21 in Beeville. And uh, looking at the dew point tracker with those gusty north winds, it's not the dew points down, so it feels a little bit better out there as far as the humidity is concerned. And we'll see pleasant dew points. I think through probably Friday, but then they start to jump up into the weekend. You start to see 60s and even 70s, and that will set the stage for some more rain. We are in an active period here. As far as high temperatures today, again, near 70 here in San Antonio. will find some 70s for sure. Hondo, Uvalde, and I think it definitely stays in the 60s up there in the hill country. Here's the forecast going forward, and uh, basically just mostly cloudy skies today, mostly cloudy skies tomorrow and the most cloudy skies on Friday. But we start to see some rain developing down there in deep south Texas. We'll start to get some disturbances rolling in from the west, and that's going to allow for showers and maybe a few storms to develop. This is Saturday morning, 7 o'clock. Notice there are some showers, and then those may feed north 
And there could be a few thunderstorms mixed in there too, although I don't anticipate a lot of severe weather. Setup's just not quite there. But as we get into early next week, that possibility will be there as an upper level low moves in from the west. So it's not just this weekend. We also get rain chances next week. But we're going to iron out that forecast as we get a little bit closer. In the meantime, just mostly cloudy skies today. 75 tomorrow, 81 on Friday. We'll go with a 60% chance of rain as it stands right now on Saturday. 40% chance Sunday, Monday and a 30% chance Tuesday. There could be some pockets of heavy rain too as we get into next week. It just depends on where some of this activity uh, develops, but we'll keep you posted. Uh, temperatures stay pretty nice, guys. A wet spring so far. Indeed. Thank you. Yep. I know we're not talking about LSU, but if we talk about the Cowboys kicking off the season, will you get just <laughs> as excited? I think we should talk about LSU too. <laughs> We will later. Why leave them out? We will later because their schedule didn't come out. Yeah, we're talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Right Dallas Cowboys. All right, go ahead. <laughs> well, Do I'll, your cowboy thing. I'll tell you what, the Dallas Cowboys will help kick off the 2021 season on national TV against a team that Dak Prescott is 2-0 against in his career. And the Texans will get first crack at a top rookie in their season opener coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys will get the first crack at the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFL kickoff game on Thursday, September 9th at Raymond James Stadium. Bucks quarterback Tom Brady and Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott will face off for just the second time in their careers. The national stage will also offer a heck of a first test with the new defensive coordinator Dan Quinn and the Dallas defense that has been revamped in the last few months. So Dallas will visit Tampa Bay Thursday, September 9th to kick off the 20th. 2021 NFL campaign. The Bucks opened as six point favorites at Caesars Sportsbook. And the Houston Texans will host the Jacksonville Jaguars in week one, September, Sunday, September 12th, noon at Energy Stadium. The game will serve as the debuts of Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence, the overall number one pick, and head coach Urban Meyer. The first meeting of the San Antonio Quarterback Club this season took place at its new location at Shearer Hills Baptist Church, where UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer was the featured speaker. Coming off a very successful first season as the Roadrunners coach, leading them to a 5-2 and two Conference USA mark, a seven-win season, and only their second bowl appearance ever. So can he top that this coming season? We were in every ball game, uh, so we're not far away. Uh, we just got some, a couple of places on the roster we got to fix recruiting wise, and we think we've addressed that in the off season. And uh, need to stay healthy in certain positions. And of course, you know, football can bounce some crazy ways. A little bit of luck along the way always helps. Yesterday was a big day at Madison High School, where as many as 13 Maverick student athletes signed their. Letters of intent among those telling us where they will play their college ball are Siobhan Respondic, who play volleyball for Texas Lutheran University. Julia Pinzone is headed to Texas A&M San Antonio for softball and Mia and Olivia Wildman. Mia will play soccer at Nebraska, while Olivia will play soccer for Upper Iowa University. I like the community there. It was a real nice school. I love the people there. It really felt like home to me. I really can't wait for my future there. Um, I'm very excited to see, I guess, how the team works, and I'm very excited to be a part of it. I visited the campus, and I loved it, and also it's, when I go in, it's going to be their second year, just having softball as a sport in general, so just having that and making history for the school. And congratulations to the Alamo Heights girls golf team for winning the state championship, led by freshman Julie Vollmer, who finished third overall individually. Angels at the Astros yesterday. Bottom of the eighth, tied at one. Two runners on for Michael Brantley, and he singles the center field to score Jose Altuve. And the Astros take the lead for good. Yuli Gurriel would add a three run shot in the same frame, and the Astros win five to one. And the Giants outscored the Rangers four to two. And yes, that was a pretty impressive uh, trophy for Alamo Heights, right? Nice. <laughs> Whenever you get one as big as the athletes, that's I know. a nice trophy. <laughs> good stuff. All right, thank you, Larry. Speaking of trophies, these people always win trophies, don't they? Look at them. Yeah, look at this. Ooh, I mean, good taste. we're talking Fiesta. Yeah. And, you know, somebody may take home, I don't know if it's a trophy or not, but win the porch parade mm -hmm. in less than two weeks to go to turn in your entries. You know, you think Fiesta, you think those beautiful flower crowns like the Odin has on. You think the headband. However, look at this. Yeah. And look at this hat she's got on her head. I feel like I'm at the Mad Hatter Tea Party, but it's been Fiesta-fied. Christy right. Davila from Christy's uh, Casa de Colores. And don't Hi, stop guys. with the crowns. You said five vintage hats, yes, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. You can use hats, headbands. Um, go down to your, you know, local thrift store and find 
find up an old hat and uh, you know color it up, add some florals, some butterflies. We've got some with lights as well. Um, and, and you know anything in the back of the closet. And if you you're decorating it. for the porch parade, look at some of the things that she can do for you. Giant flowers there. More on that. Yes. And Java Jen is with some Java and of course for four-legged friends too. Yep. Exactly. We're here at Cool Beans Cafe near La Cantera where they have your pick me up. This is a lavender blossom latte. Super excited. They also have some wine, but the most important part is the menu for your fur babies. Look at that. And we have Houndstooth visiting from the Animal Defense League. So many things to talk about. Oh, don't worry. I got a treat right here. I put it in my pocket. Okay, here we go. So we have that and a preview to their brunch as well. So many things, guys. I'm excited. Back to you. Speaking uh, that, of great yeah. things to eat, how about a very, very easy chili recipe? I learned how to make this, and oh my goodness gracious, it has got some great flavors in it. Simple to do, everyday dinners. Uh, and we've got some great tech that makes everyday life easier for your family. Wait till you see this roundup. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. Stick around.